Welcome back to Lester Arts. Today I'm going to be working on this little guy right here, trying to finish the actual artist. So uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about um, values and tone and uh, just kind of getting everything in there nice and quick. So let's get started. All right, I'm going to start off with this little guy right here. He is a number eight. Super itty bitty. I'm working on this little hand right here, which is also very itty bitty. And then his head. I think that's all I'm going to do for this particular video. All right, so I'm going to start with my darkest reds. And I think I am seeing that here, right there. Then I'm going to go into my dark yellows. It looks like there. A couple reasons that I start out with uh, my dark tones first is one, it gives some shape immediately. See, I just did a couple of strokes there, and the dimensionality is really popping out immediately. Uh, but another reason that I do it that way is that my dark tones are very transparent. Like, the pigment itself is very transparent. So when I start going into my lighter tones, which have some um, flake white, which is very, which is kind of medium opaque, and then um, titanium white at the very lightest of my whites. That's really gonna boss these tones around. As you can see, just right there, it moves right out of the way. So if I try to put down my lights first and then I'm trying to move, uh, push the lights out of the way for the dark, it doesn't work. So that's why I put the darks down first. Now these mid-tones are pretty easy to control. Because um, I'm using flake white, which is super buttery and responds really well to other colors. It doesn't bully them around. And you can also dig a dark into it much better than you can with other whites. The problem with it though is that it is very, very toxic. Toxic 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 the fact that I'm using it at all I should be wearing gloves and I think at some point in this painting you'll see me put on some uh, finger gloves which are just adorable I know a lot of artists, um, especially like atelier style artists, will tell you to paint the entire painting at once. I couldn't ever do that. 
because I just lose where I'm going, kind of lose track of where I'm supposed to go or what value scale I'm at. And it works much better for me to kind of have the same concept, but on a smaller scale. I'm going to go ahead and put my lightest lights in right here. Just so that I can see how those lights kind of affect the colors around it. This is going to be a little bit more yellow over here. There's really not a whole lot that you can't get this paint to do. If you practice at it, if you understand how the medium moves, you can get it to do all sorts of things. Now because that white that I had, um, that light pink that I'm using as my lightest lights, it has uh, it has some titanium white in it. Not a whole lot, but uh, enough to where it'll move these darks a lot if I try to push into them which is very helpful. Pushing from lights into my midtones, but if I need to move the darks into the lights, that's always an issue and you have to be cognizant of that. There's a highlight at the bottom of this hand that kind of disappears right there, so I'm just making sure to be aware of that. liking this concept of painting the artist. And people are going to inevitably ask if this is a self-portrait. It isn't. I think I might be hidden in the background eventually, but I'm not there now. And this is certainly not me in the foreground. Thank you. 
That's looking all right. So I said I was going to be focusing on tone uh, or uh, temperature and volume. And that is certainly in my the forefront of my thought as I'm going over these. But one concern that I really want to keep in mind is also um, edges. I see a lot of videos talking about edges, which is great, they're important. I don't typically talk about them all that much because there's so much out there already. And unless I got something to add, that you really don't want you really don't want all your edges to be um, similar you want like a variety of different kinds of edges like something that's like blurry or broken or You can put really similar colors together that will, um, which is what I'm doing right here. I'm putting kind of like the in-between color of those two colors together. And then I'll make it look like things are blended when you actually didn't have to do a whole lot. Those fingers are looking extra pointy to me. I think I can bring those up quite a bit. There we go. This is actually kind of the time I'm gonna have to ask myself, like how much detail do I want into this particular feature? There are two major features in this composition. The uh, figure that I'm working on now And then this guy over on the left. And he turned out very, very well. Which makes me very happy. But what that does it puts a lot of stress on this painting because it needs to live up. is looking like a good little hand. <laughs> a little dab right there. You gotta always be careful of those little dabs because 
suddenly what looked just a little off becomes like super, super off. Not that I've ever done that. No, sir. I don't know what size this is. Three eighths? Anyway, there it is right there. There we go. And I'm just dabbing this in because I want it to be um, super thin. So that darkest shadow is on, is on the red or on the blue side. And I feel like I'm starting to lose my perspective a little bit. So I'm going to put in one of my anchors, which is going to be the back of this ear. So now I got that tapped out. So now I'm just going to use that as a guide and kind of relate my marks to that. Stand in these shadows. But I want to be able to tell where I'm going in the painting. Like where my little jabs are in relation to the figure that I want to create. a lot of times what will happen is you just kind of like you're seeing what you want to put down but then when you look at what you've put down it's different and you can't quite wrap your mind around where the differences are and how to get them to match again and that's a really good way to like lose a likeness if that's what you're going for I actually think that mark is wrong and it needs to be here really I'm looking at the back of his head or the back side back and side of his head it's actually a very difficult uh, perspective to wrap your brain around
Because your brain doesn't want to see people at this angle. It'll actually... Uh, your brain will just automatically kind of turn it towards you or away from you. Your brain does that automatically. That is why you can see um, you can see somebody at a three-quarter angle, and then still be able to recognize them once they're up front talking to you. It's a great evolutionary tool. But does make painting or trying to recreate what you're seeing really challenging. Cause just cause your brain start this arm. good sense of the shape of his head here. Which is good because I needed a good sense. <laughs> Worst feeling is when you start to get lost in a painting like this and it's like what am I looking at? Where am I going? dig into my yellow and I'm just bouncing between just kind of as I need to Wipe off your brush. People always ask, how do you keep color from getting muddy? The best way I know of is to wipe off your brush. I'm just going through some of these, some of these lighter sections. I'm just getting something down. Just so that there's paint there and kind of the right color. Once I'm ready to uh, actually 
commit to certain details. Then I'll come back like these little highlights right there. I just kind of dabbed off my brush so there's still paint on it. And this is going to allow me to move. Some of this titanium white into. That's my husband down there playing with the doggies. That's starting to look pretty good. Though, I think I'm gonna have to move down to, back down to that eight. To get into some of these little places. And that's kind of an abrupt transition. I'm going to soften that up. I just love working with these pinks. I have these transitions right here that I'm going to work some pinks into. Go a little bit redder. shadows. So I have all these transition colors that are going through here that are creating the illusion that I'm blending. 
but I'm not actually blending. Optical blending, I've heard that referred to as. When you're painting this thinly, you really don't want to blend all that much because every time you blend, it picks paint up and there is not a whole lot of paint on there. So I don't want that to happen too much. Sometimes I do want it to happen though. And I think I'm gonna be getting into a little section that I'm gonna need some actual blending done. I think the dark section right here is gonna be padded down. I'm not padding down randomly. I'm paying very attention to kind of go along the seams. I think that transition is going to need some lightening. And the fact that I did that optical blending allows me to do this step without uh, losing too much. So like, Ben, all that wonderful detail is gone. That's all right. You didn't need it. You didn't need all of that. For me, it's better if I put it in and then take it off if I didn't need it rather than having it not there. If that makes any sense. I'm actually gonna go ahead and dab through there as well. And because this paint set a bit already, I can do some of this without being a huge disruption. I think the head looks pretty good for the moment. So I'm going to take... Now I mentioned that I used to use two for tiny brushes. This is a four. I used to go down to double zero, but I think the four is the lowest that I'll go these days. Just putting back some of the little hair strokes. I'm not being like super precious about where these are going. I'm just doing little crisscross little slashes. That's gonna mimic the hair. And the hair is a little bit more yellow than the skin. His skin is a little bit more pink. So I'm going back in with the yellow and putting in some of these. Little indications of hair. I 
I'm gonna use a broken edge right there just to highlight that this is not a solid object. It is actually hair, so it's lots of little objects. Alright, now I'm going to go in with that titanium white, a little bit of Indian yellow, actually a little bit more Indian yellow, there we go. And I'm going to create some highlights, where are they? They are right here. And here. And then there's another one here. At the top of the ear. There we go. Big one there. A big one there. And here. And I'm just using a crisscross motion to get this paint down. There we go. There we go, and I think I need to make a little adjustment through there. There we go. Wipe off my brush, and I want to smooth out this transition, so I'm getting a little bit of a darker yellow, and then getting that edge saturated, and then I'm going to go to a darker yellow. And that'll mix with that lighter color. And wipe dirt. And then I think I'm going to take this little brush and kind of dab through some of that. I think that's a good looking back of the head. What do y'all think? Pretty realistic.